Today in the news, we got some leaked plans from Intel and the specs for the upcoming RTX 4070. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So a couple of videos ago, I took some rumors that were here and there that were floating around about Intel's plans for 2023. Those plans were that Intel might release a refresh of their current Raptor Lake CPUs to compete with AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs with 3D vCache technology. This would mean that for the first time, Intel would have a pseudo third generation for a motherboard platform. Usually Intel only releases CPUs for two generations of motherboards. The leaks said that the new stack would have about 100 to 200 megahertz higher clock speeds and would launch in Q3 or late 2023. I also theorized that on top of that 100 to 200 megahertz higher clock speed, Intel would actually use DLVR. DLVR, once again, is a power management technology built into Raptor Lake that can improve the CPU's efficiency by quite a lot, something like 20%. It's built into the current Raptor Lake, but Intel actually fused it out for the current 13th gen CPUs. Anyways, my whole prediction was based on the fact that, uh, well, we only have three performance Raptor Lake SKUs and their KF variants right now, and that Raptor Lake hasn't really stretched its legs. So yeah, you're all caught up on uh, that theory. I took the info that I had and made a prediction. Well, guess what? A leak just popped up of an alleged roadmap for Intel's next year, and uh, here it is. What do you know? Here's Q3 of 2023, and we have Raptor Lake refreshes across the board. Nice. Going back to the uh, clock speed differences that we would see in the refresh, well, you might think that 100 to 200 megahertz isn't a lot to call it a refresh. Well, let's take a look at the uh, other piece of news, and that is the 13900KS. Once again, we got another slide fresh off the leak oven with all of the specs of the new chip. Let's focus on the clock speeds here uh, compared to the uh, 13900K. First, the TVB, or Thermal Velocity Boost. This is a boost clock for one to two favorite CPU cores. Well, in this case, it jumps from 5.8 to six gigahertz, so a 200 megahertz bump. Then you got the Turbo Boost Max 3.0 that goes up from 5.7 gigahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. And after that, nothing. There's nothing really that changed. Not the all-core boost clocks, not the E-core boost clocks. I mean, sure, the P-core base clock goes up slightly, but it's not that important, if you have sufficient cooling at least. So yeah, a very minor boost in the clock speeds. So what about the performance difference? Well, the CPU was caught by BenchLeaks, a Twitter user, on the Geekbench leaderboards. If we look at the uh, single-threaded workloads, the performance uplift that we're seeing is about 4% compared to the 13900K. Not the greatest uplift, but it's still there. Where we see these changes in clock speeds shine is really on the multi-core score we're seeing a 10% increase in performance. Remember, that's just the 200 megahertz boost on the TVB and 100 megahertz on the Turbo Boost Max. All of that within the same power envelope as the 13900K. Sure, the base power is up, but while at full load, there shouldn't be a difference. So what are your thoughts on all of these Intel news? I mean, do you think that the refresh will be enough to compete with 3D vCache Ryzen? Is the 13900KS a useless addition? I mean, in my opinion, AMD has a very big advantage uh, compared to Intel, especially in the price point. I mean, the 7950X is a beast and the price is at an all time low, sub 600 bucks. Let me know your thoughts down below. Moving on, let's talk about NVIDIA. After the specs leaked this week for the RTX 4070 Ti, spoiler alert, it's the exact same specs as the unlaunched RTX 4080 12 gig. But anyways, after that, we now have the specs for the RTX 4070. And uh, it's not that great. This information comes from leaker extraordinaire copied 7 kimmy And according to his sources, this GPU will keep a lot of the same specs as the 4070 Ti. That's the good part. Same memory bus width at 192 bit, same 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X running at 21 gigabits per second, and same AD104 die, just a cut down version. 
Now, how cut down? Well, we're looking at 46 SMs for the 4070 compared to 60 SMs for the 4070 Ti. This means that the 4070 would have 5,888 CUDA cores compared to the 7,680 on the Ti model. So it was cut down by about 23%. And given that the memory subsystem is the same, we should expect about the same decrease in performance. I'm a little confused here though, with the 5,888 CUDA cores, that's the exact same amount as the RTX 3070 from the last generation. Now, of course, there are a lot of architectural changes and the cache in Ada Lovelace is also way bigger. And I have no doubt that this GPU will perform better than the 3070. But with the price creeps that we're seeing, I hope that we won't see another 4080 situation where the performance increase basically matches the price increase and all we get that's better is, I don't know, the frame GIF generator from Nvidia. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you wanna talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Ah, no, 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 no. I, I got a cut on my finger and my thumb hurts, but okay, anyways. Ow.